name was Baden Powell, the little human before him, this person who did not understand much about life, yet would one day direct the world. So Baden Powell decided to prepare them by helping them discover the values needed to create a better world. He gave them a scarf to remind them to perform a good deed every day and to always work for peace. He asked them to raise three fingers and promise to respect these three principles. To always have a project in life. To stay loyal and always be there for their brothers and sisters. And to believe in something bigger, whatever that might be. Because believing is first and foremost believing that tomorrow can be better than today. He gave them a badge with a three-petaled fleur de lis surrounded by a cord so that they would never forget these three promises and would never let their brothers and sisters down. Not being immortal, he gave them a mission to teach this to those smaller than themselves once they had grown. Scouting was born. Today, the Scouts have over 40 million members and remain, above all, a project for human beings. We want to teach them independence and freedom of thought. We want to teach them to have confidence in themselves, to be sociable no matter what, to be a supportive partner, to be aware and analytical, to have values that open them up to something bigger. No. Scouting is not just about having fun outdoors. It is much more than that. It is a movement for young people by young people, founded on volunteering and open to all beliefs. It is a non-political, independent movement that adapts to today's society thanks to a universal method based on relationships, action, life in small groups, nature, discovery, symbolism, and the law and the promise common to scouts all over the world. This mission, these values, and this method make scouting a special experience, an activity that prepares young people for adult life to get by in their first job to work as part of a team, to create a balanced home. More than a century has passed, and since then, many scouts have grown up at home, on the other side of the world, and even beyond.
Good morning, conference. Can we ask you to take your seat so we can start the plenary for today? Well, I hope you had a very pleasant, pleasant evening last night and enjoyed the festivities at the opening ceremony. Let me start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Nargis Bolakishiva from Azerbaijan and I will be serving as one of the vice chairpersons at the 41st World Scout Conference and I'll be chairing this plenary session today. Uh, at this time, we'd like to invite representatives of the host committee of the 41st World Scout Conference, Fatima, from a station of Scouts of Azerbaijan to make some announcements. Thank you very much. Hope you're all doing well today and ready for another fruitful day. Uh, from the host committee side, we have a couple of announcements for you today. So first of all, we would like to ask the heads of the delegations to come to InfoDesk, which is on the ground floor, or to come to um, conference office reception desk, which is on the third floor, and register your NSOs for international evening, which is going to happen tonight. And please make sure you do it till 1 p.m. today. And another announcement is, please make sure you're not late for lunch. And keep in mind that we have six lines inside. So that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fatima. We'd like also to congratulate Gerakam Pramuka, the National Scout Organization of Indonesia, on their National Scout Day, celebrating 21 million scouts in their country. <laughs> to remind us of the great sp spirit of scouting, millions of young people and adults around the world share in unity. I would like to invite Ms. Mary Nakano to deliver the report on the 23rd World Scout Jamboree that fantastic event that brought so many young people together in Japan back in August 2015. Let's welcome Ms. Mary Nakano, chairperson of the 23rd World Scout Jamboree organizing team with a show of the spirit of unity. Wow. Thank you, Nagi. Summer 2015, Kirarahama, Yamaguchi, Japan. From 155 countries and territories. Summer 2015, Kirarahama, Yamaguchi, Japan. From 155 countries and territories.
the largest World Scout educational event. A 12-day camp with youth from around the world. Tuesday, 28th of July to Saturday, 8th of August. Participants spent 12 days at Kirarahama. This was our logo, inspired by Japanese cultural knots. The Jambri theme was Wa, a spirit of unity. The kanji character of wa means harmony and friendship, as well as Japan itself. Wa also makes circle, means circle, and the gesture of making a circle with hands became very popular for photo shooting. The journey of the 23rd World Scout Jamboree started in the year of 2008 in the 38th World Scout Conference. Since then, we experienced economic turmoil and the Great East Japan earthquake. But with cooperation from all of you, we have managed to host the event successfully. In summary, the event was attended by over 34,000 participants from 155 NSOs, and there were about 90,000 visitors on top of the participants. According to the survey conveyed during the Jamboree, 97.7% of participants answered Jamboree was satisfactory. In order to host a successful World Jamboree, we hosted a dry run event in the year of 2013. But as you, many of you recall, our dry run became a very wet run with an expected storm. This experience actually reflected for 2015. We decided to install a very large tent and further develop the campsite. So this is the image from 2015. Fortunately, the weather during the actual Jamboree was very good and temperature was average 28 degrees Celsius. We offered programs in modular approach. The activities at the Jamboree were mainly divided into seven modules. Global Development Village was a place where Scouts could learn about the issues that our world is facing. In the culture module, Scouts could experience different cultural activities offered by many contingents. Science module was supported by many Japanese multinational companies and Scouts could learn basics and latest of science. In the water module, there were programs about water safety and activities around the water. Nature was the opportunity for the scouts to experience environment in the Yamaguchi. In community module, participants visited all parts of Yamaguchi and had to exchange with local people. As proposed during the bidding, we offered peace module on top of other jamboree activities. All the participants had opportunity to visit Hiroshima Peace Memorial Park and we affirmed the importance of peace. Hiroshima Peace Program was actually one of the most regarded activities during the entire Jumpy. 26,000 participants visited Hiroshima and 92% of the attendees answered that the program was either good or very good. We are hoping the peace program is becoming one of the tradition in the world event. Whoa, come together now. It's time to smile again. Here we are.
up to the sky. They were the international service team. The jump rate was never possible without massive cooperation of these ISTs. In total, we had about 8,000 ISTs to help all the aspects of the life and activities, both inside and outside of Piraham. ISTs are the other ones who really made the nice jamboree atmosphere. Even at the time they had to suffer waiting three hours for their dinner, they kept their spirit very high. Without full support of your contingent management team, we were not able to have this much success of the jamboree. So thank you so very much to all of you again.
for both global and regional support centers, what would your answer be? Now I want you to think of that answer, and I want you to tell the person next to you. What do you think that number is? So everyone tell the person next to you what they, you think that number is annually. Okay, everyone has a number, and they have their neighbor's number. Okay. Okay. So our revenue is 12.5 million U.S. dollars a year um, for global and regional scout support centers. Raise your hand if you got that close, or that your neighbor got that close. Okay, well, people in the front row should have gotten that close. Okay, good. The, tr the treasurer of Wasm got it right. Um, that's good. <laughs> so um, let's look at the revenues. If you t take the 12.5 and you break them down into categories, um, you can see that the membership fees are about 37% of the revenue. Oops. Um, the annual grant from the foundation is about 26%. Project grants that we have are about 19%. Then we have other revenues that are coming from regional fees, regional foundations, and miscellaneous items of 18%. Let's look at the expense side of the budget. The expenses for WASM can be broken into the following items. Staff cost, about 53%. Activities and projects of about 26%. Infrastructure and administration of 11%. Staff travel at 4%. Global and regional volunteer governance at 3% and communication and IT at 3% also. Now let's talk about what we accomplished financially over the last triennial. Financial best practices. In October of 2015, here in Baku, the World Scout Committee adopted the financial best practices as a self-governance way to ensure that we were better and more secure with our finances. Noting that our stakeholders, member organizations like you, the foundations and donors demand the best care with their investments. Just like every NSO, WASM has limited resources and by adopting best practices, we have been able to utilize those resources more effectively through better planning and execution of our plan. Realizing that WASM needs to be a leader of best practices so that NSOs that struggle with financial matters has someone to emulate, emulate and it is important to have clear expectations from the World Scout Bureau and the volunteers who set financial targets and incur consequences if those financial targets are not met. Financial best practices are into four categories. The first is budgeting, which defines the timing, the details, the approval process, and how the changes are made in approved budgets. Audited financial reports, which sets the expectation that audited financial reports will be made available to stakeholders like you within 180 days of the end of the fiscal year. And I'm proud to say that this happened for the first year, first time this year in my six years on the committee. Internal audits. This sets the expectation by bringing systematic disciplined approach to evaluating and improving the effectiveness of risk management, controls, and governance processes. 
This is also sets the practice for each global and regional support centers will have internal audits performed each triennial. The fourth piece is the collection of fees. With fees making up 37% of the WASM budget and sections of the financial best practices makes collection of fees the responsibility of not just the accounting department of the World Scout Bureau, but key professionals and volunteers with regular reporting and communication. Also this triennial, we put in a new financial management system that, a global, that is global in scope and allows professionals and key volunteers to monitor status in real time and allows us to close our books monthly throughout the WASM. We implemented a volunteer expense reimbursement policy that ensures that everyone has a clear understanding of the policies and provides a consistent process for those volunteers that require financial assistance. It also ensures that expenses incurred are within operational budget and reduces last minute travel. Policy concerning the payment of registration fees. Not to be confused with the registration fee um, system, which was set in Brazil in 2011. This policy sets the guidelines of how the World Scout Committee will collect the fees each year, setting clear deadlines with automatic suspensions for those that become delinquent. This policy is attached each year to all of your statements to the member organizations. At WASM, one of our best assets are our professionals that, dis that dedicate days, nights, weekends, and time away from their families to make scouting happen. I'm happy to report this triennial, we published a revised human resource employee manual that, not, that, that had not had a major update since the 1970s. At the request of member organizations who had to make two changes of currency in order to pay their fees, this triennial we changed the payment fees to U.S. dollars. Still calculated based on the Swiss franc in accordance with the fee policy or fee system, the added benefits for WASM it has reduced our currency risk during the year. Let's talk about value of being a member of WASM. So everyone pull out your phone. Those that aren't on Facebook, go ahead and pull out your phone. Everyone pull out their phone, and you're going to push that button that looks like that. On most of the phones, it looks like that, because this is part of the activity part of the finance report here. So everyone has their calculator? Okay. So what I want you to do is help me add these up. Membership fees, 4.6. These are in millions. That's how much we pay every year collectively into WASM in membership fees, so 4.6. I want you to add the grant that we get, the generous grant we get from the foundation of 3.2 million. The funding we get from Messenger of Peace of 3.7 million. and other funding of 2.3. What's our total? Thirteen point eight? Did I get it right? Okay, good. So I want you to take that number, that thirteen point eight, and divide it by the number of NSOs. out there 
and you should get about 82,000 per NSO. This is the value to world scouting that each NSO generates by being a member of WASM and timely paying their fees. Let me show it to you in an, another example because this is an important concept of our value proposition. out with $60 of, of value that is proven to change the world. Looking forward, just like, um, oops, we the scouting family are going to need to make some tough decisions on the registration fee system. After 10 years of no increases in this amount, your NSO pays for being a member of WASM. The discussion in your NSO needs to be started when you return home to ensure that those that are not involved in the international aspect of, um, of international scouting see the value that you bring back from Baku or that your youth attending the Muth bring back, or those that participate, participate in Joda Jodai, or how your NSO is benefiting from GSAT or other best practices that we share amongst the family. During the next triennial, emphasis by the Secretary General and the senior management team will be to streamline financial and best practices across all support centers. Next, number three, utilizing GSAT data to make sure that best practices are shared across all NSOs. Just because I'm from Guatemala does not mean that I don't have the same financial struggles that those in Singapore have. Number four, we need to need to review our risk and insurance needs and to ensure to protect WASM. Number five, just like most NSOs, we have property and don't have a policy to help guide us on how we should manage the current and future of that property. Number six, even though our fees are 37% of our revenue, we need to continually look at ways to have sustainable income sources. And number seven, as all of my colleagues on the World Scout Committee would agree, one of our greatest assets is our professionals. We need to ensure we have a modern human resource practices that continue to allow them to grow and to allow us to attract the best people to work at the World Scout Bureau. Thank you. Thank you, Dan, for the comprehensive report. If you have any questions, we invite you to join the workshop on financial best practices, which happens on Thursday afternoon. If you cannot wait until then, please do not hesitate to reach out to Dan to the World Scout Committee Treasurer, Mr. Joseph Lowe, or the World Scouts Bureau Global Director for Finance and Administration, Mr. Oi Sun San. Can you please stand up so people can recognize you? Thank you. We'll now move on onto the breakout sessions on draft resolutions, constitutional amendments, and other key topics. Can I invite Ms. Linda Rainbow the World Scouts Bureau Junior Manager on Organizational Development to give a brief overview 
of the objectives of the upcoming breakout sessions and how delegations will take part. Thank you, Madam Chair, and good morning, everybody. The next session is a key result of the World Scout Committee's effort to strengthening WISM's institutional decision-making aimed at ensuring a more inclusive, informed, and streamlined process of which we hope it will ultimately lead to even more informed decision-making. You all have received in advance of the conference all draft resolutions and the proposed constitutional amendments. Together, these form the key policy decisions being proposed to the 27 World Scout Conference. During the upcoming 150 minutes, all delegations will have the opportunity to attend two sessions of their choosing on any of the proposed decisions. The objectives of these sessions is twofold. To infer, inform you about the proposal at hand and to answer any questions about the proposal and to interact with the delegations and the proposer to discuss any amendments you might be considering. On the slide, you will see an overview of all the sessions available for you to choose from. Each session lasts 75 minutes and will be repeated twice. The first session starts immediately after the closure of this plenary until 10.45. We then have a coffee break of 30 minutes until 11.15 after which the next batch of sessions will go until 12.30. I'll now share an overview of the room allocations with you. On balcony five, we have the 13th World Scout Youth Forum outcomes. On room B7, we have the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Room B5, we have the concept review of the World Scout Youth Forum and the World Scout Conference. On room A3, we have constitutional amendments. Room A4 is the draft resolutions proposed by member organization on languages, World Scout Committee size, and youth advisors. In room A5, we have the draft resolutions by member organizations on sustainability, Jota Jyoti, and bidding for events. In room B4, we have fees and voting. Room B6 is membership growth. Balcony one is the scout method. Room B2 is spirituality and scouting. Room A1 is transparency and scouting. Room A2 is the world safe from harm policy. And room B1 is the WISM membership requirement. You will also find an overview of the room allocations on the screens throughout the venue, as well as on your conference mobile app. Thank you, Linda. Uh, please use these sessions as an opportunity to discuss and, and debate with other participants. Let me also remind all delegations of an important deadline coming up soon to facilitate our proceedings tomorrow at 14.00. Today, the World Scout Committee kindly ask all delegations to submit any amendments they might have on the constitutional proposals to the resolutions committee through resolutions at scout.org. You're seeing it on the screens behind right now. We come back to the plenary after lunch at 14.00 today. Please note that particular session will be chaired in French so ensure you pick up your interpretation devices if you have not done so yet. Session is adjourned. Thank you.